We turn now to Syria and its ongoing civil war. The uprising there was sparked in 2011 in the southern city of Dara, and since then it has been largely held by rebel forces. But now the regime of President Bashar Assad, backed by Russia, has launched a military operation to retake it. And as Nick Schifrin reports, that has led to the latest massive and forced displacement of civilians caught in the crossfire. In this war, those who flee bombs carry the world and everything they own on their shoulders. In the last few weeks, 270,000 Syrians have fled for their lives. They walk for hours to a desolate corner of the desert with no infrastructure because it's safer than staying at home. One man who didn't give his name carried his son to safety. We were surrounded. We're refugees. We're under attack. Where should we go? I swear, where should we go? They went to the closest, safest place, the Jordanian border, guarded by Jordanian soldiers. And they sit, waiting for help that's not arriving. Women, children, elderly, all, all uh, kinds of civilians that, uh, that are stranded along the border. There are injuries and even death that are uh, taking place. Darika Erkateva is the head of Doctors Without Borders, Jordan and Syria mission. She's only been able to send in two trucks of supplies. There is no medical uh, health care that is being provided, so the people are trapped with no uh, access to basic uh, services or basic um, uh, needs. This is what they've fled, massive airstrikes by Russian jets, and a trail of destruction left by Syrian and Iranian-backed troops targeting one of the country's last two rebel-held territories. This is what consolidating government control looks like. A Syrian soldier firing artillery, a column of Syrian tanks that have made Dara a ghost town. The markets are blown out and empty. What used to be an apartment complex is an abandoned shell. This was once the Al Musaifra hospital. A Russian bomb exploded in the main lobby. The stretchers are cut in half, and the operating tables are pockmarked and deserted. Dara is where the uprising began in 2011. Since then, Syria has gone from crisis to calamity to catastrophe. 12 million people displaced, more than half the country, and more than 400,000 dead. But what's different now, it's in a particularly sensitive location. Those fleeing their homes have ended up in the corner of three countries, Syria, Jordan, and the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. The exodus has put pressure on Israel and Jordan and threatened to entangle both countries. Jordan has sent aid across the border into Syria, but it's already taken in 1.3 million refugees who live in the region's largest camp and won't accept any more, said Jordanian government spokeswoman Jumana Gunemat. We feel the pain of our Syrian brothers, but we have Jordanian priorities. It's security and safety in the first place. Everybody knows the reality of the extremist organizations inside Syria, and we are not able, honestly, to take that risk and allow the refugees in. Near the Israeli border, displaced Syrians set up a tent city. Israel's moved tanks toward the border and issued a warning to Syrian and Iranian-backed troops not to get too close, as delivered by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. We have a separation of forces with Syria since 1974. This is a fundamental agreement. We will follow it meticulously. And it's incumbent on all others to do the same. The U.S. has 2,000 troops in Syria, but they are far from the location of this crisis. And the U.S. explicitly told the rebels not to expect any help, which means the outcome of this fight is preordained. The rebels are outgunned, and there's nothing stopping the Syrian and Russian assault. In Dara town, rescue workers managed to pull out a girl, alive, from the rubble. But many who stayed in Dara paid with their lives. Rescue workers had to dig out bodies and walk them through destroyed streets. And for those who fled, the horror of this war is never ending. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin.